take a, a shot here and, and ask you to comment on what you may have heard, connections or otherwise, about our former president's personal predilections toward illegal drugs. We have, of course, testimony from people that he has been involved with cocaine for many years, nasal problems, the work, uh, the works. Do you think that, uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you have any confirmation of that from sources that don't have to be named here? What's your take on that? What was Bill Clinton up to? Well, <clears throat> you know, there's just so many rumors that you just can't... Uh... Well, there's too many rumors to count. I know. Uh, Terry yeah. Reid said that he, of course, during his Arkansas days, had, had seen Clinton meeting in a World War II bomb shelter uh, during the MENA days and all of that. Well, that's... that's yeah, and Terry Reid, uh, I did do, do a couple of shows with him, but... Uh, <clears throat> that was at the time when when Clinton was governor of uh, of Texas. That's right, I mean, Arkansas. Of, of Arkansas. Yeah, sure. And um, but no, I I don't. You know, I'm I'm sorry to say that I can't comment on that. All I know is that uh, uh, during the Bush uh, era, uh, I actually met uh, President Bush Senior on January 14, 1986, mm -hmm. in, in in Guatemala. And I told him about the Contras being involved in drug trafficking, and he just shook my hand and smiled and walked away. <laughs> but, see, but then I knew, because that's an yeah. hour later, he meets with Oliver North, uh, Caledo, uh -huh. head of the Contras, and yeah, yeah, yeah. all the guys, and, and he knew what was going on. But, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth, you know, what, what, what's going to happen, you know. Sure. you got to remember, we have the best intelligence network in the wor world, and they all know what's going on. And uh, it's just... Uh, Ignorance to a large no excuse. Who are, who are some of your your heroes? Do you have any people you look up to in this government of ours that, uh, that you think really are trying to continue to carry on the tradition of representing America, America's best interests? <clears throat> well, I, I I hate to say it, but I, I don't think there's nobody out there. You know, I, <laughs> no. I, I you know it's uh, okay. Ma Ma Maxine Waters tried, but you know she just stopped. One point, she just came to a complete halt. On yeah, it. was she told to knock it off? Well, uh, basically, this is what... Now, now, he's talking, excuse me, Sully, he's talking about Maxine Waters, of course, uh, from L.A. Right, uh, the congresswoman. Congresswoman. And, and, she, and what happened was, I think, my, my, my professional opinion is the fact that she was being used by Clinton for uh, for the impeachment thing, and if the, if ah. the Republicans tried to impeach uh, Clinton, I mean, actually take him out of office, I then she was, he, he was going to release Maxine with all the information on the Republicans during the, during the 80s with, with drug trafficking. And that was the standoff, as they say. And uh, that's why she didn't move or do anything else uh, until she got orders uh, that it was okay, nothing was going to happen. Well. But, uh, you know, that, that was the bottom line. I really thought that she was going to come out and, and help. But then again, you know, her husband was the ambassador to the Bahamas. Yeah. So. Yep, yep, I know how that works. And, uh, you know, my local congressman's not going to do anything because it's, uh, he's one of the boys and, and so forth. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know what else to say, but uh, uh, if you know, uh, I, there's two people that, that I've seen them now as, as we speak. They're trying to do something about this. And this is uh, the representative from, uh, from Illinois, uh, Jan Chawaski, and she introduced a bill. Uh, Bill number 1591, and it's an introduction. It's called the Andes Region Contractors Accountability Act, mm -hmm. and what it is is uh, it prohibits the federal government from funding private armies in the uh, in the Andes region. Okay, and mm -hmm. she just put that bill into effect uh, this uh, past month. And now, will it pass? I don't know. No, oh, will it? <laughs> we, we tried with the Open Records Act, and it didn't happen. Right. No, it just it so, didn't. It didn't exactly. Indeed. There are uh, some great publications out there dealing with this subject, and others, of course. Uh, Cop versus CIA. You've uh, you've got to stop by and see that website. Uh, Michael Rupert has put together some tremendous information, as you well know. So he's a great friend of yours. Uh, right. From the wilderness, it's called. He's got one issue here that this is very provocative headline. Why does George W. Bush fly in drug smuggler? Barry Seal's airplane. Barry Seal, of course, was eliminated, but uh, did you have any run-ins with uh, people that knew Seal and so forth? Oh, absolutely. A lot of our agents down in Florida that I knew personally, I had worked with in New York City, uh, were the handlers of Barry Seal's. And uh, when I was down They in handled him? Yeah, they handled him. He was uh, an informant okay. for, the, for the DEA and the yeah. CIA and so forth, but... Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you know, and he was going to complain. He was going to talk about uh, how the CIA was involving drug trafficking and so forth, and that's when he got whacked. Why was he going to talk? Why was he going to come clean? Uh, well, because they, they, they he had, you got to remember, he had two cases uh, that he was, that he was working off. In other words, he was being, char- he was being charged with drug trafficking uh, prior uh-huh. to becoming an informant. So he had that over his head. I see. And he, you know, he just, uh, I got a little cocky also, you know, being a, the biggest uh, drug trafficker. Uh, that ever happened. There's also another website. It's called Guerrilla News Network. Guerrilla uh, News Network. Yes, they just okay. did a big uh, documentary on the crack the CIA out of L.A. and it's under video now on uh, on their website. Oh, really? It's up there now. Yes, uh, they Guerrilla got, News Network. Yes. Dot com, and, I assume. And, and basically, what you have is you have mm-hmm. uh, Mike Roper, you have myself, and and some other people mm-hmm. out of Mena, Arkansas. Uh, that lady who was a reporter up there, and mm-hmm. and uh, another professor, and and other people. So, so uh, I got it. So was was Bush Senior flying around in uh, Barry Seal's airplane at some time? Well, no. Uh, it, it was uh, it was uh, George W. What yeah. happened was that plane was purchased by the state of Texas. So it was what, Junior what? that got the plane. Okay. Exactly. So, so it, it was wasn't Barry Seal. Wasn't at the controls, but it used to be his airplane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what it was was the. It happened to. It just happened that the state of Texas bought that plane before George W. became governor, ah. and ah. Uh, he just used it to, to to fly around. But it was just ironic that uh, it belonged to Barry. It is very ironic. That yeah. Barry seals. Oh, she. All right. Now the question that uh, I want to pop in here before I forget it is: asset forfeiture and asset acquisition by the government, claiming drugs and so forth. That has been used, I guess, and abused by many people. Absolutely. Uh, this is something that is, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars of private. They can come in and charge you folks, and well, tell them how it works, Sally. Well, ba- basically, you only have to be charged with it. If, if, not even charged. If, not even charged with it. I have some people right now that they've taken their property and so forth, and, and, and what I do now is I'm an expert witness on entrapment and informants for federal cases. Ah, and and basically, it's got nothing to do with the guy being guilty or not guilty. It's got mm-hmm. uh, with the agents following procedures. And out of the ten cases I worked, every single case I got a, approximately ten to twenty counts of government misconduct that can prove the fact that the FBI and the DEA agents lied and their informants lied and so forth, and the, and the prosecutor lied and so forth. But when they find out that the, we know what what the misconduct is, then they yeah. flee out the guy. With the condition that he's not going to talk about the misconduct. So they give him back his stuff. Yeah, he, exactly. he signs and a that's deal. Why I'm not going to talk. You get away with it. You know, we. I see. Michael uh, Brunswick, who was the head of the uh, IG's office, uh, said, "Hey, you need a, a police uh, action group uh, outside the agency to investigate the FBI and the DEA." Good luck. Yeah, I, I know, but you know, I mean, for a guy that worked for the government for many, many years, and then all of a sudden he says, "Hey, these people are out, out of control." And we saw it at you know Ruby Ridge. We saw it at Waco. We saw oh, it, yeah. you know. And, but and, basically, right yeah. now as we speak, there's, there's a guy now who spent 30 years in jail back in, in 1970 as, as a Sicilian guy or Italian guy, and he was framed by the FBI. Now yeah. they subpoenaed the FBI agents and they pled the fifth. I mean, All I'm right. talking about um, uh, 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 civil rights violations that have been committed yeah. for many, many years right. by, our, by our government. Took half the guy's life away from him.